charge, here's what I can't get over. Um, even if you're another conservative justice, you're watching all this happen with Clarence Thomas. It's embarrassing. Right. It makes the court look bad. Correct. Is there anything they can do? No, there's nothing really they, they can do. They have no authority over each other. Even the chief justice does not have authority over individual justices and their decisions to recuse or their decisions to disclose things or their decisions to accept or reject. They yes. did do the toothless ethical thing, right. which yeah. I, they could have done better there. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I don't think that the, the Supreme Court can itself enforce a solution to this. I think the solution goes much, much beyond uh, anything the Supreme Court can do. I mean, I think that su Supreme Court justices and judges generally, state and federal, are underpaid. I mean, if you look at, the, you know, $174,000 is a lot of money, but the fact of the matter is 29-year-old uh, lawyers who, who clerk on the court and then go to New York law firms or even Washington law firms make more money than well, that. Well, they, they, they also get an appointment to the Supreme Court and are the highest but, but judges right. in the and, land. And that's exactly right, because... You, when you decide to take a job, a lifetime appointment like that, you are deciding to make that sacrifice. And yeah. if you can no longer make that sacrifice, and I know many federal judges um, have done this, they will they resign and they go and they take the corner cushy office at at, at, at um, um, Joe and Smith and yeah. on on, <laughs> Main, and Smith. on on Wall Street or wherever. And and it's you you have to you have make to, you're making the sacrifice or you don't. Claire, let me ask you, because there's obviously growing skepticism about the court for a range of reasons, uh, ethical reasons, obviously outrage over the Dobbs decision by not just Democrats, but independents and others. But one of the points that Liz Cheney made in her book, I'm always looking for a little bright slide here, but I want to see what you think, is that when it came to issuing subpoenas for Trump documents, the conservative Supreme Court, three Trump nominees, ruled the right way. So does that give you hope as it relates to where they will land on, say, the issue of presidential immunity, which is pretty important uh, around the case of the January 6th case? Well, um, I have read what a really smart lawyer by the name of George Conway has said. And um, he has said repeatedly that he thinks most of these issues that are being presented are slam dunks for the government mm. in terms of the arguments that Trump is making. I think the more interesting question Jen, is what's going to happen with the subpoenas that the Senate Judiciary Committee has issued around the ethics on the Supreme Court, and how is that going to end up? Because the way this process works is they have now authorized subpoenas of Leonard Leo and Harlan Crow. Um, some would say Leonard Leo is the architect of the Dobbs decision. He certainly was responsible for the list of judges that Trump touted when he was running for president, that this is where the Supreme Court justices would come from. By the way, all of them were smart people who knew they were taking a lifetime appointment at a cut in salary. So I'm not going to feel sorry for Clarence Thomas. So if these subpoenas <laughs> are approved... If these subpoenas are approved by the Senate, then it's a civil contempt, and it goes through the courts, and guess where it ends up? At the Supreme Court. So um, this, this will be interesting to see. This is a real question on the checks and balances. Does the U.S. Senate have the right to ask questions about the ethics, about the conduct of the Supreme Court, which it appropriates funds for? And that is a question that has not been decided in our country, and it'll be interesting to see how it turns out, but it's a sticky wicket. Very. Lots of tests on our system. Okay, Claire just gave you a well-deserved compliment there. So Thank what you. do you make of the question she just posed? Um, I, well, I think that um, to some, I mean, I think there are limits to what the what how, what Congress can do to investigate Supreme Court justice. I don't think they want to get into the internal deliberations of the court. But I do think that the financial issues are, if they're, if they're done for, in, if they're investigated in good faith, um, are, are significant and, and should be investigated. For, I, I'll tell you one thing. It's funny to remember when you see what's happening today and all the different things that, and amounts of the amounts of the money and the gifts, the forgiving of the, of the loan for the RV, and you see all of that from so many different people. Mm. To, you contrast what happened in 19, I guess, 69 or 70 with Justice Abe Fortas, who was up for chief justice. Um, and and, and the, the, the Nixon administration basically threatened to prosecute him because he was taking $20,000 from a benefactor in New York. Yeah, this is a little it, bit more than like, $20,000. Yeah, no, it's like, <laughs> I mean, poor, I mean Abe Fortas must be just rolling in his grave about yeah. this. But to go back to the point about um, 
the, the, how it affects the decisions of the court. I, I have to, I, I think it's important to take these ethics issues and separate them out from ideology and whether these are conservative judges or liberal judges. And, and I think that, you know, it, 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 they're going to decide the case. These aren't matters that affect how the judges decide cases, but it affects respect for the court, which is very, very important. Yeah, that is an important point. And, and it's a differentiate, which is hard because it right. feels all bad. Right. So, Claire, in the limited time we have left, I wanted to ask you, I mean, one of the things that's obviously outraged people across the country in the last couple of years is the Dobbs decision. But also this ethical stuff is also outrageous. As people, Democrats and others, think about how to run, how to incorporate the court into political campaigns, is it just Dobbs? Should they be talking about the ethical stuff? What, what's your legal and political take on that? I think the ethical stuff is an undercurrent of the Dobbs decision. Um, and it really starts with Merrick Garland. It starts with a unbelievable thing that occurred when Mitch McConnell said, I'm going to ignore the Constitution and pretend like a sitting president didn't nominate someone to the Supreme Court. And from there, it was off to the races. And now with all the ethical stuff that's piled on. Um, but, but frankly, if they were perfect ethically, um, the Dobbs decision would still be an earthquake politically, and it will be an earthquake. And anybody who thinks it's going away hasn't met very many women. Dobbs decision or ethical? It sounds like you're going to say Dobbs decision is better for people to run run on next year. I, I, I think the Dobbs decision is better for people to run on. I don't think people are going to understand the ethics issue, the details of the ethics issue at, at all. Yeah, they, they'll just, Clarence Thomas will be on his yachts and we'll be focused on he's yeah, taking I, away I, women's rights. It's probably a more powerful argument to make. George Conway, Claire McCaskill, thank you both as always for your overlap of legal and political knowledge. I uh, appreciate you both being here.